Hello, I'm Martin Sheen. The film you are about to see, Fatal Fallout, produced and directed by Gary Null, traces the entire history of the nuclear weapons and energy industries. We are shown the links between the weapons industry and the nuclear power industry, and how our government has attempted to silence the truth about the huge amount of damage already done. A major meltdown or terrorist attack on a nuclear reactor could render hundreds of square miles permanently uninhabitable in addition to killing tens of thousands of human beings. We must educate ourselves and stand up to the special interests who pollute our environment. It has been shown that when plants are closed down, the cancer rates dramatically decrease. We must start raising our awareness and work to have a better, more healthful planet. It is up to the people who care to make a difference. Future generations are counting on us. New question, two minutes, Senator Kerry. If you are elected president, what will you take to that office thinking is the single most serious threat to the national security of the United States? Nuclear proliferation. Nuclear proliferation. I agree with the, my opponent that the biggest threat facing this country is uh, weapons of mass destruction in the hands of a terrorist network. One of the astonishing revelations of the 9-11 Commission was the fact that the terrorists, in seeking out targets in the New York area, first looked at nuclear installations. They didn't clarify precisely which installations, but we know that it's Indian Point. Indian Point is a commercial nuclear reactor north of Manhattan. It is perhaps the most dangerous commercial machine on the planet Earth. On 9-11-2001, a group of 17 Al-Qaeda terrorists chose to crash their planes into the World Trade Center and the Pentagon, killing more than 3,000 people. But had they flown 10 miles further north, they could have just as easily crashed their planes into the Indian Point nuclear facility. Class 9 accident at a nuclear power plant. The dome overpressurizes and cracks. Radiation spews out of the dome. By 2 o'clock, the winds are blowing at 10 to 15 miles an hour. Radiation now is going past the evacuation zone. Heaters and detectors will start to go off scale. At 3 o'clock, large portions of Manhattan are now being doused with radiation. But for the most part, people will carry on their normal affairs, not realizing that they've taken a lethal dose of radiation from the Indian Point nuclear power plant. Radiation cannot be felt, it cannot be seen, it cannot be smelled. All you'd notice was a metallic taste in your mouth. You'd all be trapped. Millions and millions and millions of people. One successful hit. No one would get out. 21 million people. All the children in schools will be bussed out on school buses. Since there are not enough buses to make just one trip, the plan is that there will be multiple trips of school buses. But the public is not supposed to know. At 4 o'clock, the governor comes on television to make the announcement that evacuation plans have been made to evacuate people 10 miles from the Indian Point nuclear power plant. Well, sorry about that. Radiation has already soared over Manhattan. The entire logical structure of the plan is fundamentally flawed and not even honest. They don't plan for the terrorist attack because they can't. At 6 o'clock, the President of the United States comes on television to announce that a major terrorist attack has taken place at Indian Point. However, the evacuation plans for New York City are not in place because New York City is outside the evacuation zone. What happens to the people in Manhattan? There's chaos. People don't know which direction the cloud went. There are going to be tens of millions of people fleeing the contaminated areas. Everyone gets into their cars and spontaneously evacuates with or without an emergency evacuation plan. The Long Island Express 
is the world's largest parking lot. People in the outlying areas are not going to have the social infrastructure. They're not going to have the beds, the foods the, to handle the millions of people that are going to be flooding out of the New York metropolitan area. And they're going to be covered with radiation. At that point, perhaps farmers may pick up shotguns, just like in the 1950s, to keep the New York City slickers out. Within 24 to 48 hours, people would be experiencing severe nausea and start vomiting and developing severe diarrhea and they would die within days or a week or two of acute radiation sickness like the way AIDS patients die. New York would be, it would really be a long-term intensive care unit with people who are waiting to die. America should also expand a clean and unlimited source of energy, nuclear power. Many Americans may not realize that nuclear power already provides one-fifth of this nation's electricity safely and without air pollution. There are three plants in the United States that many people consider are perhaps the three most dangerous machines on the surface of the earth. They are Indian Point, which is outside New York City, Zion, outside Chicago, and Limerick, outside Philadelphia. We realize that there is something called the 10-mile evacuation zone. Why did they choose that number 10? Why wasn't it 15 or 20 miles? Because if they had extended it to 15, 20 miles, then you would have had to evacuate Chicago, Philadelphia, New York City, which of course is a physical impossibility. It would have been obvious then that the 10-mile evacuation zone was a fraud. I'm a physicist. I don't believe that the winds stop blowing at 10 miles from a nuclear power plant. That would be a new law of physics if all of a sudden we saw the wind suddenly stop blowing 10 miles from a nuclear power plant. In case of an accident or in case of just routine emissions from Zion, Limerick, and Indian Point, radiation will spread much farther than 10 miles. And so I think here we have a, a folly of the NRC that they can mandate a law of physics that radiation travels no more than 10 miles from a nuclear power plant. New reactor designs are even safer and more economical than the reactors we possess today. We can generate tens of thousands of megawatts of electricity at a reasonable cost without pumping a gram of greenhouse gas into the atmosphere. Now the industry is trying to foist on the public a new generation of nuclear power plants, the high temperature gas reactor, perhaps 400 of them, which President George Bush has stated will, will save us from the greenhouse effect and will prevent us from being overly dependent on Middle Eastern oil. Well, I think this is jumping out of the frying pan into the fire. Because if you look at the so-called next generation of nuclear power plants, the only thing going for them is that a meltdown does not take place in one hour. That's all it takes for a class nine nuclear meltdown to take place at a commercial nuclear power plant of today. The new generation of nuclear power plants, they say, take 24 hours to melt down. You could have dinner, and you could go out and, and have dinner with your friends, even in the middle of a meltdown. That's the selling point of this new generation of reactors. However, the, the problems with this new generation of reactors are obvious. They still melt down. Maybe it takes 24 hours, but they still melt down. And plus, they create the same amount of nuclear waste as before, and they are still sitting ducks for any terrorist. You could take a new generation or old generation nuclear power plant and paint a bullseye around them because they would be a magnet for any terrorist who wants to disable a major metropolitan area and strike a blow in the name of terrorism.